a lot of you folks that are watching this video right now are well you go back to about the same era that I did and that was back when you could quite easily fix a lot of things on your car yourself like you could quickly change the gas line filter uh, most of my old cars you could uh, either change it uh, with a filter that looks a lot like this only the ones I used to buy were plastic or nylon so that they wouldn't dissolve in the gas I guess and uh, and they were they were dirt cheap you could buy them like 49 cents or something now I know cost of living is going to up the price of the same thing but anyway what you did was of course as you remember you'd uh, you'd have a clamp like this and you'd loosen it and you'd pull the hoses apart and then you'd stick the new filter in and shove them together. Well, you know how it goes. Anyway, I've still got this piece left over from who knows when that goes back. This piece of rubber could go back to the, I'm guessing, well, back to the 70s for sure. Anyway, the, uh, what I was thinking is, why couldn't I just take and use it as sort of a safety thing here, just stick it on the end here, then I can't, you know, impale myself on these sharp pointy things and uh, I'm noticing I've got a, a brand new one here why not use the new one uh, yeah it seems to work out okay anyway just a thought when I get up in the morning I usually have the same routine and uh, it kind of goes like this I'll get up I'll head for the kitchen and I'll plug in my coffee pot and then the cold kitchen floor hits my bare feet and I make a very quick beeline to another room well anyway after I get myself going I get down in front of the computer and I first thing I do is I make sure I get the order right here because I know it's very important right anyway I check my email then I go from there and I'll check Google News, see if anything important's happened. Now, I know they're probably slanted a little bit one way or the other politically, so you're not going to get everything. But, you know, if there's a big earthquake somewhere or something like that, <clears throat> excuse me, you're, you're going to hear about it. Uh, then from there, I will, uh, I will check my Facebook. Then I'll check the weather. And then the last thing I will do is I will bring up all the comments in YouTube and I'll answer any questions or, you know, there's usually an average of about six or eight comments. And that's about it. And I'll, I like to read every one and you might get just, just a happy face or, or a, a thumbs up or something, you know, uh, but I do read them. Anyway, while I'm sitting there, my iPad makes this little noise like it goes, it sort of goes ting. And uh, I, I don't have the big iPad. I've just got the, uh, the iPad mini here, as you can see. And uh, I haven't actually used it uh, since uh, I went to Kelowna almost two years ago to see my mom and I put my boarding pass on it. It was kind of handy for that. So it's, it just sort of sits there plugged in with the battery charger on it. And uh, every time I get an email, it alerts me. So I got an email while I was sitting there and I thought, I wonder who it is. So I check and it was somebody asking a question. And the question that they asked was, uh, do you find that the uh, paint is sticking good onto the railings? In other words, that uh, primer that we put on, uh, probably can't see that, but we'll, we'll zoom in on a piece later because I plan to actually do a little check here. And, uh, and I commented back that I'm pleasantly surprised. It's, it seems to be sticking on really good. Even when I squeeze it with the, with the uh, tweezers, uh, I'm not really chipping it off. Now, now, I can scrape it off if I use something sharp. It will, it will, it will scrape off. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this primer that we used, um, this stuff here, it, it seems to be working really good on the photo edge. It's not coming off. So anyway, I was thinking what we could do is uh, take a little tiny piece here. And uh, no, I'm sure you can't see that. Anyway, and we'll bend it. And then we'll zoom in close on the bend. Uh, now, the, 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 uh, we'll bend it two ways. We'll bend it uh, a, a, a rounded bend. And we'll bend it a real sharp bend. And we'll look at both. Uh, yeah.
Let's let's do that. That'd be kind of interesting. I want to see it myself. I don't think I've actually looked really, really close at this. Uh, just behind me there, there's a, a microscope. I guess I could do that. But uh, anyway, enough's enough, right? Let's get on with this thing here. Enough rambling. Okay, let's take that little piece. I believe this is the same one that we were looking at a minute ago. And uh, we'll make a sharp bend at one end of it using Andy's photo etch bender here. And then we'll make a rounded bend at the other end of it using this little bit here. Now I just measured this. This was 58 thousandths of an inch in diameter. That's just slightly less than a sixteenth of an inch if you're wondering. I think a sixteenth of an inch is 65.5 or 62.5 or something like that. I used to know but I forgot. Okay, I'll put this down. Alright, now take my blade here. I should be able to come in and make a sharp bend. Yeah, you can see that, I'm sure. Now, it's not a real sharp bend, but to the naked eye, it's a sharp bend. Now, we'll make a rounded bend. Now I've slightly overexposed this shot here so that you should be able to see the uh, gray photo etch up against the almost black rubber. Now I want this to be up like that. And we'll make our our bend here. It doesn't have to be precise, it just has to be about 90 degrees. No, I think that's 90 degrees, more or less. Alright, let's stick on the macro lens and see if we can see any uh, evidence of, you know, paint chipping off on the outside band or maybe along the edge here, you know, where it, where it, uh, where it bent. Maybe I'll slip the super macro on after and we'll just check the, along the edges. Now, just to clarify, what is it that we're looking at here? Well, we're looking at one of these rails that came off of the uh, railing. And you are seeing it far clearer. I'm trying to rotate it here. You're seeing it far clearer than you would with the naked eye, by a long way. Maybe I should have had it sitting on something else, like Andy's photo etch bender, and then I could slide it around. But anyway, I want to take a very close look, if I can, right on the edges here. I don't want to scrape the paint off, but right on the edge where the bend is. Because if there's any cracking, I think we would probably see it there. I've got a microscope slide here. We used it for something else at some time, but that's okay. And this is uh, just double-sided tape. Now, because the camera's running, I probably won't be able to get this off. <laughs> okay. Now. Don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I can hardly see what I'm doing. Okay, I believe that's on there now. I don't want to press it into the tape. I just want to I just want it to fall off when I turn this up on its side. Well, that seems to be all right. Now, this is my second try on this. The first time what happened was I got back to the computer, started editing, and I realized that I didn't have it in focus here very good. So I'm back here, and I'm going to try and redo it. I think what we'll do is we'll try and concentrate on this right-hand corner that is supposed to be our sharp bend. But when you see it 
close up like that, you realize it isn't. Now, there is another way I can maybe do this a little bit here. I'll just sort of, with the camera, I'll optically zoom in on that spot. Now, if I can find the right button here, one, two, three, four. I think that's the one. No, that's not it. One, two, three, four. Why can't I zoom in? Oh, maybe because I'm recording and it won't let me. Okay. Alright. Let's try and get that pinpoint sharp here. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now, I'll stop it down. Right now I'm open at 2.8. I'll stop it down to 5.6. and might get a little sharper. Alright, now... Uh, You'll notice here on the right hand side there's there's no cracking in that sharp bend anywhere and of course there shouldn't be on, on the uh, on the gradual one. Uh, so to that viewer who was wondering you know uh, you know uh, what what do we end up with well I, I'm, I'd have to say that that uh, primer is sticking really well and it's not flaking off one iota and that little piece has been handled a bit so uh, yeah now you are looking at it edge on. If we were to swing it around and look at it from the side, we might see something else. But uh, I think uh, I think we've uh, sort of proved our point here. I don't think I can make this. Keep your eye on the right corner. See if I can make it any better. Whoops. Now it's about as good as I can get it. I think. Anyway. Yeah, the primer stick it on. All right, yesterday we put this little railing on. And today we want to try and continue on along here. And I'm thinking that I may as well take this off. If I can. Very carefully here without breaking anything because the pin on the very bottom is not much of a pin. Oh, now that I remember, I did have a problem getting this to, to go on there. There we go. Now, I think the best way for me to go is this L-shaped piece right here. Start here with a post there. Bend it here. There will probably be a post come right about here. Another post will probably come about here. If I'm really lucky a post will come right at the end where it's supposed to. But uh, I don't think I'll be that lucky. And, you know, I know I could start with the post here and then go along and see what happens when I get to this this part. The problem is, if there's no post there, what do I support those uh, four rails on? They'll be just sort of sticking out. Whereas if I go this way and I end up with uh, with rails, I can put them along the side of that. Now we can remove our safety gas line hose. Okay. Maybe I should have taped this down. But I didn't. I want the outside of the bend to be up against this part of the Well, I won't know until I actually lay it on there. So let's lay it on there and get the bad news. Okay, I'm just trying to envision this laying down now. Does that look like maybe I made the bend a little bit too close? 
just standing up all by itself. It was standing up all by itself. Okay, let's try and eyeball this here. I suppose I could measure this distance with a uh, caliper, or with a divider, but if I was to make the cut right about like that, well, about halfway in between those two posts, just where the blade is, it, that looks like about right. Let's just nip that off and see what we got. I can always make it a little shorter if I have to. Now let's see if we can do this on the first try. I'm just going to set it on there well in from where it's supposed to go. Now, it has to come back about half a millimeter towards us. I put this in behind and slowly twist it while well, it act as a lever. That's not bad. Let's see if we can glue it right there. We're going to have to call it quits today, folks. It's well after 3 o'clock here. And, uh, yeah, I did too much fooling around, I guess, with other stuff and instead of, uh, you know, gluing railing down like I should have. Now, if I was to try and glue this little piece down right now, I'd be rushing it, and I'd probably screw it up worse than I'm going to anyway. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.